The next thing I'm gonna reveal is right here in this treasure chest made out of bamboo. A food you won't believe. This is. Today, our best ever Myanmar food tour continues in Pindaya, home of the Danu people. Here, we're getting a close-up look at rural Myanmar life. From completely unexpected market food. Boiled cow skin. Do you want to try some? To a countryside celebration on a massive scale. It's an epic feast for the ages. Where an entire village is working together to create a once-in-a-lifetime feast. Time to eat. In these mountains, Kongbo Market is the epicenter of hustle and also bustle. Once a week for almost a century, local tribes have exchanged produce, food, and culture. Inside, there's ready-to-eat food that's been seen or tasted by few outsiders before. Welcome to Kongbo Market. Today, we're doing it all. Soon, we're gonna be joining a local family for an epic feast, part of which I believe we're gonna to have to hunt down ourselves. So before we do that, I need to fuel up on carbohydrates and other local food here at the market. Let's go. Here, this is an egg lady. She's had to transport all her eggs to the market. And how else would you do that? Except for get a big crate, layer the eggs in there, and then in between put all these rice husks so they don't break. It's not exotic or crazy, but it's cute. Next. Okay, thank you, bye. Here you'll find the standard market fare, veggies, fruits, protein, but you'll also find displays containing unique mountainy products like local herbs, flowers, and ants. Wait, what? Ants? We saw in our last video how the ants were extracted from the tree. <laughs> There's ants all over me! And you can see it's not an unusual thing here. Why don't they have ants in the USA? Can we petition Whole Foods? They're organic, high in protein. Um. <laughs> Check us out. Nice, huh? We need the same gloves and we'll be perfect. <laughs> so here, I think this is like a donut. Can I try one? These bad boys are a deep fried mixture of glutinous rice and rice flour, drizzled with jaggery syrup, basically like molasses. I'm gonna try it out. That's really good. It's completely saturated when you bite into it. It's like a sponge releasing more thick, sweet, syrupy molasses. That is pure sugar. Somehow, it's not a big deal for the people here. They're walking around a lot. They're getting a lot of daily motion. For me, this could be a problem. Um, young cow. Yeah. She's like, ah, uh, I know. I made that shit. Minglaba. <laughs> Here, they've got a bunch of beef, beef parts, skin, and here, beef skin salad. Could I have uh, one of these, please? They've got the cow skin here, and it's been kind of colored by turmeric, coriander, and some crushed peanuts as well. Do, do you want to try some? Oh. The texture hits you right away. The fat got some chew to it. It's savory, you taste some peanut, then some fresh coriander. It's kind of all over the place. But as for salads go, my doctor said I should eat more salads, and I think this is exactly what he meant. Um, jajiba. Here, this is a local specialty, turmeric rice. What? When's the last time you had that? Not since you were a kid, I bet. The rice, I think they cook it with turmeric because when they pull it out of the cooler, it's already yellow. Then they slam it with some fish flakes, some scallions, and some chili oils. But over here, they're like, what? We got to put some rice with our rice. This is like puffed rice, so that's going to add some texture. Grab a spoonful. It's going to walk you through every step. Put in mouth. Mm. Oh, that's very nice. The puffed rice offers a welcome crunch. A little oily, a little savory, some great texture, but that's it. Just a nice energy-packed morning treat to get your day started. On the side, chive roots. I haven't seen them anywhere in my life until I came here, and now I see them everywhere. Mmm, oh, that's a good combo. These people know how to rock a breakfast. Final breakfast, I swear. We've come to a noodle shop. Here they have flat noodles with tofu paste. If you're wondering what else is in there, well, literally, zoom in everything. It starts with a pot of homemade broth, then a handful of cabbage and flat noodles. 
This joined forces with tofu paste, chicken curry, sweet thick soy sauce, MSG, salt, normal ass soy sauce, garlic oil, crushed peanut, and scallions. That's a lot of stuff. First thing you gotta do, just give it a mix. There are layers of flavor on here. Whoa. Here we go. Mmm. Yo, that is an addictive, just thick party noodle and just crazy thick sauce on there. Everything just tastes fresh and savory and a little MSG-y, which I like. There's a lot of MSG haters out there, guys. It's not gonna kill you, unless you're allergic to it. But just don't eat stuff you're allergic to. In small quantities, I think MSG is fine, you know? It's like uh, cigars or meth. Don't do a lot of meth, do a little bit of meth. Duh. That's it. You guys get your own noodles, leave me alone. With my belly half full, I am ready to join the Danu people in their village. We're on our way to a village now. We've come to a village house here, and they said, we're eating pork. That's great, I love pork. Where's the pork? And they said, right here. After hearing that I ate four breakfasts, the locals gave up any hopes of me catching anything and caught the pig themselves. <sighs> By the way, this pig is eating tea leaves. He's probably like, oh my God, I never get to eat tea leaves. Best day of my life, this is great. Why they even let me do this? <sighs> the Danu people are hardened by life in the mountains. Their name comes from the word donke, which means brave archers. In the past, they were courageous warriors. <laughs> But these days, they've traded warring for peaceful countryside life, living off the land and surrounded by forests. Guys, welcome to what is truly a shitty job. So here we have the pig intestines, and I always wonder how they clean it out. Here he's literally just filling the intestine with warm water. Oh, and everything just comes out, everything he ate. Anyways, they seem to rinse out pretty well. After this, they're gonna boil it, make sure it's super clean. I'm gonna leave you to it. I feel like I'm distracting you at this point. Bye. After the pig is processed, it's delivered to the main Danu kitchen. In this village, there are nearly 300 people living in 60 homes. Their income largely comes from raising cattle and growing tea. Cooking is underway. This is a huge undertaking. Everybody in the village is pitching in right now. We have all these pig parts and we're gonna make several different dishes out of it. Right here, what is this? It's like a reverse bong. Meet our head chef, Mr. Ko Ying Ye, a man with great cooking skills and even greater fashion. I like your headband, by the way. It's nice. So, right now we have pork trotters here in the wok. These trotters are super meaty, so this is gonna take the longest. While we wait for the trotters, I've been invited to join a tea picking party. Now we're in this serene, really great tea field. Here is a tea leaf plant. Oh, it's a tea plant. And we're just kind of picking the leaves off it. I actually don't know that much about tea because I'm not an alcoholic who's become sober yet. Those are the only people who drink tea, right? I'm trying to see if there's any patterns how she's doing it. She's just kind of grabbing random leaves. How do you know which is a good leaf? Okay, what about this? Yes? Yeah. Oh, I thought I showed you a bad one. What about that? Yes? Bloop. This one? Get out of here. Don't want it. I think I accidentally planted a tree. Huh? Oh, bye. It must have run out of good leaves. Yeah, it's not because of me. After the tea is collected, the leaves are boiled to remove any bitterness. Then, they're topped with a lime juice, along with tomatoes and green chilies, mixed with fried beans, peanuts, cabbage, and a touch of peanut oil. This is the woman behind the tea salad, Miss Ma Su. Remember this guy? That's her husband. Wow, we got a whole family thing going on here. This is very unique because every other part of the country, they're gonna pickle the tea leaves first. Here, all they're doing is boiling it and then boom. I'm gonna try it out right now. Oh, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't eat a lot of salads on my show unless they're made out of animal skin, but I can make an exception here. This is a very good salad. It doesn't taste like tea. For some reason, I thought it would taste like tea. It just tastes like normal greens. I love it. Earlier, we saw the intestine extraction. Now they've been moved over here to the kitchen, and eventually, they're gonna cook inside the bamboo. Sir, is this how you always cook your intestines? He's saying usually they cook it either in bamboo or in like a clay pot. On your list of favorites, what number are we coming in at with the intestine? Nine. 
Nine! Yes. I mean, are we even making nine dishes? That's probably last place. Oh, guys, check it out. There's so much action going on here. We got the guy blowing in the fire. We got this guy doing some nice mixing. Bamboo, boiling, skewers are roasting. And here, there's a whole face of a pig looking at me. What? Guys, we're doing it. We just have one last food to make before the meal begins. This one is the pig blood, which they boiled it in a plastic bag. So, you know, that's good for the environment. It's reusing. Right now, all this baked blood cake is going in there. Little bit of salt, sprinkle that in. Ooh. Minced coriander going on top. Super simple recipe. Wow, that's some good looking pig blood. Wanna try it out? Good. That is yummy. Super simple, but super good. Just a little bit of oil, a little fried up, fresh coriander. Oh, I like that. I think we're ready for a feast, yeah? <laughs> Let's do this. Food is served. Villagers begin to gather as I join my host family for our meal. Who is this? Sam. That's your son? Sam mm, more. Um, a tree. Three sons? Yes. Wow. You're a busy guy. Yes. With the kids, they require a lot of attention. That's what I mean. Let's eat. <sighs> what do we start? Okay, this is a pig face salad. This um salad, a word they use pretty loosely in these parts, starts by cooking a whole pig head for two hours. Then, chop, 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 toss in some secret pig sauce, and bam, face salad. I'm gonna try it out. Mm, that's pretty good, man. I mean, it's super heavy. It's pure fat, but it's got a little tang to it. Dude, that's great. A young cow. That means yummy. Yeah, I speak the local language. It's not a big deal. Calm down in the comments, guys. The next thing I'm going to reveal is right here in this treasure chest made out of bamboo. A food that is his ninth favorite of all the dishes here. This is the pork intestine. <sighs> Wow, would you take a look? After chopping the intestines, they're set inside a bamboo pot with minced garlic, MSG, mashed tomatoes, and sawtooth coriander. Cooking inside the bamboo until the flavors begin to dance together. I got your eyes on my mind. It smells super fresh. Now the tables have turned. All these people are just seeing intestine. I was there for the dirty business. I'm gonna try it out. All right, that's great. Yo, he crushed it. Great springy texture. It's like you're eating a bunch of little calamari, but with great seasoning. My man, that is not number nine. That is n n number three. Number three. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> really? <laughs> you like it? Two. It went up to two. Yes. That's incredible. For our final dish, stewed pig trotters, simmering with garlic, salt, ginger, and star anise. There's still some hair on here. <laughs> All right, just kind of uh, not through it. Here we go. Mm. That's yummy. It's thick and gelatinous, but it has a nice taste to it. Super heavy and fatty. It has collagen, which is good for your skin, and it has hair, which is good for my hair. Probably. Let me know in the comments down below. We kind of did it. It is amazing. From one pig, they've made 10 different dishes, maybe? Overall, I gotta say, you, your family, your community, you crushed it. I've never seen anything like this. In two hours, you guys took a pig and you turned it into a feast for 40 people. So I wanna say, thank you. Can we do an elbow pound? Boom. Love is love. Adi no. Next time on our best ever Myanmar food journey, we're blazing far past a simple pig face salad in search of the most exotic food Myanmar has to offer. And you'll never believe what I found. That's sick, man. Good find. Oh, yeah, yeah we can shake hands. Kebabs in Iran, mm. banh mi in Vietnam, I love it. boudin sausage in the US. I like that a lot. There's one thing that connects us all. It brings out the best in us. <laughs> Showing that despite our differences, you want to test the blood? What? At the end of the day, we're all people. <laughs> Sometimes very hungry people. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. So this is an ode to the part of life that unifies us all, food. From researching and shooting 
to editing and mastering. Our 10-person Best Ever Food Review Show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q&As, and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. We're just happy you're here. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace.